So next week is launch week six. And last time we did a, Ant and I did a video and it was wildly popular. There were literally <laughs> dozens of people watching the video. So we thought we'd do a repeat. And this time we're going to cover not just how we launch, but the team culture at Superbase and some of the things that we do to run a fully remote team. How many people work at Superbase? We're now 60 people. Um, we've only been around for coming up to three years now. So it's been quite a quite a growth over the last 12 months, especially. So yeah. How many, how many countries are we in? Um, I think we're in about 25 countries now, but uh, people keep moving around as well. So it, <laughs> it fluctuates. So obviously we're reasonably well known, I think now for our launch weeks. Um, and I think, you know, a big part of our launch weeks are the team really. Uh, they're the ones who put together uh, a lot of the features that we ship. And so what we wanted to dive into maybe was um, some of the things that make our team, uh, I guess, special or able to do that and uh, how that has evolved over time. So yeah, maybe you can start by telling us a few things that we look for when we're hiring people. Yeah, so now that we're in so many countries, um, it's basically impossible to obviously have everyone on a call at the same time now. Uh, so the first thing we came to realize um, was that people need to be extremely effective when working remotely, but also asynchronously. And there's a little bit of a difference between those two things, right? Um, and so being able to identify people who are just highly individually motivated and can just execute without a lot of FaceTime has been very important. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that we look for really is, uh, I think you said it at the start, we looked for, they were particularly passionate about a particular project. This passion, you can kind of see when they're talking about a problem that they want to solve. And this leads to some sort of intrinsic motivation. You don't actually need to say, oh, can you solve this bug and check in with them? You just know that they're going to be solving the bug uh, day in, day out until they yeah really smash it. So, And it can be actually any problem, it seems, as long as they're kind of passionate about solving that problem, that intrinsic motivation seems to transfer into basically everything else they do. Um, so that's been yeah a, a big facet of the sort of hiring process, I guess. Definitely. And it, it, it sticks out like a sore thumb in the interview process as well. Because when you start to get into the topic, let's say it's auth, like we're hiring for the auth team, people who have these super strong opinions of like, you know, well, I've tried these five products and none of them have worked in the way I expected. And a lot of people do it this way, but I think they're wrong. They should do it that way. Like it really just stands out that this person understands the problem area deeply and it's just very opinionated and and like you said they're they're just not going to stop until they've scratched their own itch yeah. with regards to this product which uh yeah it's just it's just amazing to to see in these people i guess that probably leads to a, a counter side of this i mean if people have strong opinions then um often they can be hard to work with right so I guess we needed to balance this at the start as there, what are some of the other things that we know, you know, strong opinions are good, but uh, what else are we looking for? Definitely egoless just always comes up again and again. When we talk about things we love about the team is uh, just people. Yeah. They have these strong opinions, but um, they're not, they don't cling onto them for the sake of just clinging onto them because it was, you know, because it was their idea and they want to see it through. Uh, people are definitely very open to to, <laughs> to to collaboration is you know is very important I, I, another thing related to this egolessness um is people's willingness to do the schlep work and we always talk about this in interviews when we talk about the culture at superbase um and i think you say it best couple when you say that like 90 percent of the work easily in a, in any startup is just the the grunt work is the schlep is it's not sexy work it's just getting in every day putting the hours in and yeah. and finding the people who are willing to do that um is just so important yeah it sounds kind of obvious but that's a little bit 
of a secret source of a startup is just hiring people who are willing to get up and grind every day. And uh, those who grind uh, often find success at the end of the, the grind. And then they've got to sort of get back on the horse and do it again uh, day in, day out, right? So, um, you know, the startup that can do that the most and the most effectively is typically the one that comes out on top. And it's, you know, tiny, but uh, the the thing that we really hammer home, I guess, in our onboarding, uh, we talk about this idea that, especially for us, we're building dev tools for other developers. And if one of our developers spends an hour solving a problem, that's one hour spent for them. But if we have a million developers on our platform and they're all going to use that tool, we've essentially saved the world a million hours of work. So that that one hour of grinding is worth it for the world. It just uh, really removes the the grinding for so, so many other people. So, you know, really we should be seeing this work not as a chore, but, you know, as a huge benefit for the world. And I think we try to find people who have that mentality already. Of course, we talk about it, but the truth is that, yeah, we can often find it in people before we even hire them and then just promote it as one of the things that makes super base culture special. I remember at the start in our very first or second conversation with the investors after we had uh, received our seed round, we kind of did this brand lens where we talked about all the things that were important to us uh, as you know individuals and how we wanted to run the company. And we said egolessness and they said, oh, well, good luck finding a champion team who's egoless. And they really didn't <laughs> didn't think that would be possible and of course we stuck to it and now they really look at the team as being one of the best things about superbase so i think you know if you're starting don't be persuaded by your investors i guess or like if there are things that are important to you then it's really important that you embed them into the culture because you want to look back and be very proud of what you're building and make sure that you know it sticks with your internal values as well another th- thing that we maybe is a little bit different at Superbase is the first item on everybody's job description and their work contract is that you are first line support. Um, and I think this ties into the egolessness thing as well, because it's like, regardless of your position in the company, whether you're the CEO, the CFO, whether you're the intern, you're going to be expected to, as a priority, get in there and talk to the customers and help solve their support issues. Um, And I think that's something that our users just really appreciate because they know that the team is highly available to solve their problems. Um, But it's something that you kind of need to, to be like, have your ego in check to be willing to just like drop, you know, these, again, these sexy like development tasks and just like help customers with, with really whatever they need. How does that look day to day? I mean, I guess our support tickets and our GitHub issues and things are one of the fastest growing uh, facets of Superbase. Um, You know, more people piling in, more questions. So day to day, what does it look like? I mean, 60 people solving all of these full time um, or, you know, how do we do it at Superbase? Yeah. So so we do have a a dedicated support team. which are globally distributed, who do a lot of the triaging. Um, We still ask that anyone who works at Superbase spends between two and four hours a week just, you know, going into the ticketing system, helping out where they can. And and it really helps as well with understanding the customers and understanding the users because there's no better way to to see, like, what what we need to build and the direction we need to move in than to like just reading these these support tickets. Um, it's it's an amazing fire hose of feedback and issues and and appreciation as well. You know, people who love Superbase often just read a, write a message and they'll say, "This is uh, I love this system." And and also also the negative stuff as well because I'm personally quite excited when we receive a, an in depth thread of all the areas we could improve upon. Right. Um, the fact that someone would take the time and the care to write this list of issues is just like incredible for us. It's just such a huge help. Um, and since day one in the Superbase dashboard, we've had this um, like a feedback widget in the corner. 
And I think when you first put it in, I was a little bit skeptical of whether people would even use it because it's, you know, just a little feedback text box in the corner, like who's going to take the time to write stuff in there. But it's just been this like incredible source of feedback, both positive and negative. Um, and it, it's such a fire hose. It's it's even hard to to triage all of this. And um, and we do feed it through to each of the teams um, in their in their weekly uh, catch up document. Um, but it's it, it was honestly a surprise. Yeah, you, you know we have this concept of kaizen at superbase maybe you can talk about what kaizen is and how we use that within our culture yeah so within superbase kaizen is this idea of like continuous improvement to all of our processes um and continuous like small improvements as well because oftentimes it's tempting to come in and say i think we should overhaul this entire process or introduce this new tool or thing and we always just try and trim it down to like what's the smallest improvement we can make to nudge us in the direction that we want to go in. Um, and it helps because you don't want to change, like it's too much risk in making big change um, to culture or to processes. Um, so these like small nudges are very important. Um, and the, the system where we've kind of landed on with all of the product teams is that each of them will have their weekly sync um, and their weekly uh, sync document and uh, where everything is kind of funneled to. So all of the product feedback, positive and negative goes there, uh, open GitHub issues for that team go in there. Um, you know, things that are decisions that need to be made, decisions that have been made so that everything's recorded, just lives in that document for that one team. Um, and again, it's just, we're always tweaking that process you know is it too much information going in is it not enough information so just always being on top of that that uh that meta that meta process uh, of incremental improvements has has just been useful yeah yeah it definitely feels like the most agile environment which i've in the truest sense of the word you know people talk about agile and typically what they mean is like scrum or some methodology we kind of have quite a pragmatic view i think of agile how we do things um we're continuously i guess the kaizen mindset is really just like a continuous retrospective of what's working what's not um kaizen for those who didn't know actually comes from the toyota production system um and they have this baked into their culture and i think that's one where you know people get in and on day one at Superbase and we just give them autonomy to change anything about Superbase. We tell them, you know, you are the company now, you make the changes. If you're worried about a change, put it on this Kaizen channel and ask the team, but otherwise just go ahead and make the change. And if you uh, make a mistake, which we say in a little bit more vulgar language in the onboarding, <laughs> then we can always roll it back. And there's always a process that can be improved upon uh, even the concept of Kaizen, how we're doing Kaizen is an improvement itself so i think having a blameless culture as well because there was that famous google study which was like the thing that successful google teams had was psychological safety mm -hmm. um, and one of the most important like aspects of that is to not like blame an individual when something goes wrong but to blame the process and that's something we just really have tried to implement at superbase of you know whenever something goes wrong it's just it's not an issue with the individual so another one that we generally try to hire for or we look for within the interview process is a default to action. Maybe you can talk about what this means and, and what it means to Superbase. Yeah. So this became clear when we very first started working together. Um, you know, January 2020, um, we met off for some whiteboarding session and the, you know this thing went on all day and i think we were drawing out um you know what is superbase what could it be um like how are we going to go about it and um, all of this stuff and then at the end of this just like entire day in this hot meeting room of like sharing all these ideas like when when someone like me would just go and put the kettle on um or, or you know try and go and get some food and take some downtime like you just got the laptop out and just immediately started executing on all of the things that we've discussed. And <laughs> that was the moment where I was like, oh, 
this is how Superbase operates now. It's just like we just don't stop. And I think the the words that always pop into my head now, um, whenever we like have a discussion or a meeting or some decision is made at Superbase, is just why not now? It always just like pops into my head. And I think that's something that you have just like instilled in the company um, from the very start is just this like, well, why would we wait till tomorrow? Or why would we wait till next week to like, you know, you always hear this phrase, oh, like, let's find some time, you know, let's find some time to discuss it tomorrow or next week. And I just never want us to be in that position where we hear those words because yeah. I just think it it just slows companies down so much yeah yeah agreed i think actually it's because i have this um passionate distaste for meetings <laughs> which seem to be <laughs> so uh so embedded into so many companies and i just remember actually from like uh you know some earlier jobs where i just sat there and you know there was just so much talking going on and nothing was actually getting done so you know Really, I, I see meetings as a way to just clear blockers or get people on the right page. And then anything beyond that should be, you know, a meeting shouldn't be around to film the time. It's just a means to an end, which is the end is to do the work, right? So, um, yeah, yeah the, the, the least amount of meetings possible, I guess, <laughs> the, the better f from my pers perspective, at least. I think we see this as well in like, or at least I'm starting to see it when I'm jumping on calls with external companies, especially the slightly larger uh, external companies who, you know, will pile on 15 people onto a call and, you know, just be me with 15 of their <laughs> their people. And I just think how many hours they are wasting there. And a lot of them don't say anything in the meeting. I just, uh, I don't know what they're doing on the call. And there seems to be a lot of, you know, talking about how to decide on things rather than deciding in the meeting. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely something that uh, Superbase seems to have got right so far. Let's see how well it scales. And and I think one thing that surprised me was our team's ability to to do creative work asynchronously because that's one thing that always gets quoted as, oh sure, we can get rid of meetings, but if it's anything that is new or requires like a a brainstorm session then obviously that has to be a meeting and i think actually at superbase following a lot of the like long-standing open source um methodologies for, for doing this kind of thing like rfc's request for comments we've managed to move a lot of that asynchronous as well a lot of that mm -hmm. brainstorming a lot of that back and forth mm -hmm. obviously we we're fully remote because we we don't want geography to decide who we can and can't hire we just want the best possible person for that role whatever it takes one thing that's become clear is that building a platform like superbase a globally distributed system if all of your employees are in the us then you tend to only optimize performance for the people who are working on the system. So a lot of like global platforms are fast for US East One, but not for, for any other regions or continents. And one thing we've sort of got for free from having a globally distributed team is that whenever we talk about performance, it's it's about global performance, whether it's you know the Japanese data center or the African data center or the US data center. It's just all on a on level level pegging. At Superbase, we hire a lot of ex-founders. And actually, I think the last time I tallied is 25% of the team are ex-founders. Why do we do that? And um, uh, actually, it's a question from our team. Wouldn't they be a challenge to manage? <laughs> yeah, well, why do we do it and how does that work? Well, the first thing to call out is that we don't really have any managers at Superbase. It means that everyone is expected to basically just get their hands dirty and do IC work as their primary job. But this hiring ex-founders, again, maybe at the start, it's just because we knew a lot of other founders. The people we managed to bring in really reduce the translation required between like the business side of the business and the technical side. If they're like technical founders, they just have this appreciation for the fact that you know you have real world users and customers to deal with and it's not just about 
sitting and writing code all day. So I think the people we found just have this amazing blend of technical and business and and can think at a higher level about the business as a whole, uh, which is just such a blessing. I also think founders are really good at just like changing their role often to just whatever is needed and just doing the jobs that need to be done rather than staying within this fixed job description. So I think like flexibility and being comfortable with uncertainty because there's a lot of uncertainty in early stage startups. Yeah, and I think the analogy here is kind of like, you know, a sports team, which is often made. I mean, if you recruit some superstars into your NBA team, you don't tell them how to dribble on the ball or anything like that. The main thing is just making sure that people are cohesive within the team, right? Largely, we think product first and organization seems to organize itself around the product. I, I think the people who are most successful at Superbase are the people who take responsibility without being asked. Or they... Or they they don't even ask. <laughs> they just <Yeah>. take. <laughs> um, and these people are just incredible because they also have this ability to remove work from the plate of others. The best people are just clearing blockers for their teammates as a priority um, so that they can focus on their superpower and doing what they do best, being 10x in some particular area. How at Superbase do we decide what to work on and what the teams will work on? Well, because we positioned ourselves as the open source Firebase alternative initially, the first couple of years of deciding what to work on was kind of easy because people were just saying, well, you've given us this database. Well, now we want Firebase auth <laughs> and now we want Firebase real time and now we want Firebase file storage. Um, so those big items initially was kind of obvious because we had 80% of the customer base asking for this particular feature. I guess to follow up on one of the things that you said, you know, we position ourselves as an open source Firebase alternative, which many people might think then, oh, well, let's just copy exactly Firebase and make it a one-to-one -one mapping. So Superbase, obviously, well, obvious to us, maybe to new people, it's not so obvious, but we're not a one-to-one -one mapping. How do we go about deciding, you know, how to implement things uh, in certain ways that are different? Why do we choose to be different? I think the, the first thing we always do is look to see if there's an existing open source solution with, you know, a good community, good support for Postgres, um, because that's always preferable. Like we, we never want to just reinvent the wheel for the sake of us being the ones that wrote the code. But if there isn't something that exists that's suitable, then we'll make sure that we'll be the people to, to start that project, make sure it's open source. Uh, we did a whole video on why open source is important to us. Um, so it's definitely like a philosophical thing as well. And we have a long list of product principles, which we give to everyone in the team. And I think this is what has allowed us to get away with having so little management is that everyone has all the information they need to make high level decisions on the product. And we have all of these principles. One of them is that it should be modular by design. So for example, the auth system, you don't need to use it within a super based context. You can take it and use it on its own. The same for real time, the same for file storage. Um, it's not just one big monolithic product. We need to make sure that each of these things works well in isolation as well. I think the other one that's, you know, we've already touched on it, but one of the things that Y Combinator, they say is, you know, talk to your customers, talk to your customers a lot. And the funny thing is, you know, you don't actually need to talk to developers. They will tell you. Um, this is one <laughs> of the surprising things coming from, you know, a startup that's not so, or other our other startups aren't so focused on developers, but Developers, if they don't like something, will definitely tell you um, there's this flood of information. So, you know, I kind of think of it like, I don't know if you've ever heard, you know, Warren Buffett quite famously reads like 600 pages of um, company reports every single week. And, you know, if you said to 
uh, you know, how does Warren Buffett invest? And you try to like systemize it. He probably couldn't because he's just got this like flood of information is in his brain, which somehow is picking up. Oh, this industry is growing or this company here is a diamond in the rough or something like that. And it feels like that's how it is with our uh, feedback system. Our job is just to funnel it to the right teams. And from there, you know, they'll get this sort of intuitive sense of what the best in the world looks like you know we're browsing on hack and news every day seeing critiques of other systems or we're seeing a show hack and news with the next thing that's up and coming seeing trends and as long as we're funneling that to the team they're also getting this innate sense of what the future looks like and how they should build that into the product so it's not just solving things that are table stakes but also with kind of eyes on the future to be a bit opportunistic about you know, how to build things as well. So next week is Superbase launch week six, and we have a hackathon that starts right now, actually. <laughs> so if, if anyone has been looking for an excuse to try Superbase uh, or to, to start some new project, uh, you can do that and also, you know, potentially win $1,500 in GitHub sponsorships. And we also have a bunch of Really cool swag that people can win. So superbase.com slash launch hyphen week is where you'll find all the information about what's coming next week. Um, and it's where we'll be dumping all the product announcements. So definitely keep an eye on that or on our Twitter or on our YouTube. Um, or on our Discord. We'll see you Or on our Discord. Let's go. <laughs>